morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Our announcements are in our bulletin. We have choir practice on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock, as always. Um, community prayer time is on <coughs> Wednesday, Jeff? Yes. At 5.30 at Shelley's Pike Inn um, to pray for the community. And if you want to get supper there, you're welcome to buy supper there, too. Uh, youth group will be on September 11th at 2 to 4 p.m. <laughs> Cluster conference, mark your calendars for this. It's on uh, October 9th, which is a Saturday, which is different, and it's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's at Avery, which is just up in Washington, so it's not far away. Um, it's an interesting thing to experience if you've never been to one. And we vote on all of our officers and everything there. So if you have any input you want to do on that, you, you ought to come. Fall Lay School, they're doing two days this year, uh, November 6th and 13th from 8.30 to 3 p.m. And I think those are Saturdays too. You need to register by October 1st. It's $20 a piece. And there are brochures for it out on the information table. <coughs> You don't have to want to be a lay speaker or anything to go to those classes. You can just do them for enrichment for yourself if you're interested. Um, our ch um, change challenges going on. I know it says dimes, but dimes are so little. You can put quarters into a Gatorade bottle and, and fill that up if you want. Um, and we'll, we'll collect those on December 26th, and we're using those to help pay the connection work connectional apartment appointment. We still have the magnets for sale and the cookbooks are still for sale. And we're still collecting aluminum cans. Church council meeting is tomorrow night. We moved it this month. So it's tomorrow night at six o'clock. Please come and help us make decisions about our church. Any other announcements? Yes. Joy, go ahead. I have a couple. Um, there's not many here today, but uh, there are books downstairs if you want to browse a little bit before we uh, put them away, shall I say. Um, and also, I'm going to have a paint class. It's also on October the 9th at 10 o'clock. It's a set of three cats, if you would like. It's going to be, for the set of three, it's going to be $15. And you need not bring any supplies at all. Um, and all the proceeds are going to go to the church. And I'm also going to invite Houston if they would like to come also. It's going to be on uh, October the 9th also. What time was it? Uh, at 10 o'clock on Saturday. Will we, will, we, will we be done by like one? It depends on how fast you are in Germana. <laughs> Any other announcements? No? <coughs> then, get on the right page, it helps. Will you join me in the call for worship found in your bulletin? <coughs> Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. For sin the way of sinners, for sin in the seat of strong but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And now God's law and meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water that yield their fruit in season, and leaves do not wither. In and all that they do, they, they prosper. Our uh, first hymn this morning is found on page 402 in your hymnal, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. <laughs>
in Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. O oh God, rest my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on a robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, Twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay people to all according to their work. And now if you would join me in the unison prayer found in your bulletin. Thank you, God, for all that you have given us. To you be honor and glory forever. We pray that all your blessings may make us steady, more diligent to devote ourselves and all that we have to your glory and to the service of others. Amen. church going. So this morning, though, I will offer a prayer. Jesus said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Precious Lord, your love for us is amazing. You have blessed us in so many ways. We are thankful for the numerous ministries of this church that reach out to children and families. 
May a portion of this money continue to support those ministries that welcome children in our midst. Amen. We've now come to a time when we share our joys and concerns to be incorporated into our morning prayer. Does anyone here have a request? Hazel. Julie is, have, is supposed to have surgery on Thursday, but when she went to the doctor for clearance, her blood pressure is up. They put her on medicine, but so far it hasn't come down. So we need for the medicine comes down so she can have the surgery or the Blood pressure comes down so she can have the surgery and the surgery goes well. She's real, she's really nervous and she just needs prayer. Anybody's nervous before surgery, believe me. <laughs> yeah, I know. We all know that. Any others? Oh, okay. 
Um, I need prayers to continue for my three brothers, Skip, Terry, and Dave. Um, they're doing better, but they still need prayers. Also, prayers to continue for my son, Susan, with some mental poisoning. And Lynn, who is having, I mean, she had a knee replacement. She's doing therapy, and she needs prayers to, to get better. Brother, Kip and Skip. Skip. Skip, Dave, and Terry. Oh. I can't hear. <laughs> so, if I mess them up, just blame me. Anybody in the back? Yes. Unspoken. Unspoken? Two residents of Stravangwood that have COVID, so please pray for them. And that means we're back on lockdown, and it's just depressing for everyone. I'm afraid we're all going to get on lockdown here pretty soon. Sure. Um, I have poison ivy all over me pretty much at this point, so Ooh. because the back gets better, and also we found out this week I have to have minimal surgery done on October 27th on my back. So just, I think we're all a little overwhelmed with too many surgeries, too many things going on. So just pray for our family. which will come from the word of God, our faith will be increased. We ask, Father, that you would use your word, which is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword, to rightly divide us even to soul and spirit, joint and marrow. Use your word, Father, to expose the thoughts and the attitude of our hearts. We ask for your blessings on those whose names have been offered for prayer this morning, for Julie, who's going to have surgery. We pray that her blood pressure will soon be subsiding. Hazel, her brother's pathology came back clear Thank you, Lord. And for Skip and Dave and Terry, Susan and Lynn, we ask you to lay your hand on them. And for the coronavirus that is hitting nursing homes and personal care homes and being put on lockdown, please be with them. And for Jess, who has suffered, suffered from poison ivy, we all know that discomfort, but also for her surgery on her back on October 20th. Give her the strength that she needs to face this surgery, and we pray that the doctors will be able to do the surgery that is needed. And we pray that this these deadly viruses that are threatening our lives will soon be defeated by you and the doctors that are trying to find a cure. 
we all come to you in prayer as we say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is found on page 601 in our hymnal, Thy Word is a Lamp. Let us all join and sing together. morning is found on, in James chapter 3 verses, no, I'm sorry, chapter 3 verses 13 through chapter 4 verse 3 and 7 and 8, if you wish to follow in your Bible. James is talking about Two kinds of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above but it is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. So there is friendship with the world. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? 
Do they not come from your cravings that are more within you? Don't you worry about things and you imagine things and wonder how am I going to take care of that? So your turmoil is, excuse me, is in you. You want something and you don't have it. So some people commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, and therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts you double-minded. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. <clears throat> so, this is all building up to what the message that was in our directory for this Sunday. Only I renamed it. It's called Peace. Because this is what we're going to talk about. I have papers here everywhere because I, I went through things and my poor eyes would not let me type on the computer this weekend. I started it. I could not do it because my eyes go all blurry. So, I need photocopying, so excuse me, but that's what I had to do. So I may be a little slow or I jumble up, so go with me. Now, author Evelyn Underhill wrote that it was interesting to her how the time that Jesus wanted to offer his followers peace was when they were on the threshold of the most tumultuous time of their lives together. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives you. This is what Jesus said to them. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is taken from John chapter 14, verse 27. Then Jesus went out and died the most horrible, painful death. He was beaten to a bloody pulp and hung on a cross to suffocate and die, to be mocked and spat upon, sneered at, ignored as one more example of how not to live in peace. But as he said, not as the world gives. Now maybe that's our problem. Maybe we don't understand peace. Maybe we've defined, defined peace as the absence of something, of conflict, of worry, of trouble, of doubt. But Jesus wants us to define peace as a presence. Peace is not what we've emptied from ourselves, but we've filled ourselves with. And what we've not filled ourselves with is ourselves. At least that's what James said in the uh, scriptures that were read. <clears throat> now, James mentions the harvest. 
But it's not peace. Did you notice? Peace is not an end. I know we pray, give me peace. Jesus even said in the Gospel of John, I give you peace. My peace I give to you. Peace is a mode of action. Peace is a method by which we choose to be at work in the world. We sow peace, we make peace, we bring peace. We toss peace around like seeds, like cool drinks of water on sweltering days. We plant peace in hearts, our own and someone else's. Isn't that what our job is? In part of carrying God's mission is to bring peace. Now that sounds like a lot of work. That's the opposite of what we thought peace was once upon a time. Oh, just kick back, we have peace. Not really caring what kind of peace. No, this peace is the enemy of apathy. This peace turns the tables on injustice. Yes, it is work. Sowing peace is an all-consuming enterprise. But it does have an end. A harvest, James calls it, a result. That's what, and then there is righteousness. That's what James calls it, a harvest of righteousness. What is that exactly? Well, Jesus called, Jesus called it the kingdom of God. Righteousness is about being faithful to our relationships, about honoring, honoring the covenants with God first of all, but then also with your brothers and sisters, those in the faith and those that are not quite there yet. We still have to work with them. <clears throat> Righteousness is about living as though God were the determiner of who was worth loving and who wasn't. Peace, like joy then, is an outcome of love. When we learn to love God, we will know peace because you're going to bring God into your heart. But when we learn to love like God, then we will make peace with others and we will sow peace. Christ wants every Christian to experience his peace. How many of us lived in peace? Oh, let me rephrase. How many of us lived in peace this past week? I'm asking you a question. Any of you live in peace this past week? No? Have you had any peace today? Why not? The word peace runs through the whole Bible. In the Old Testament, and the wonderful words of a benediction used by the priests, the promise is, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We have heard that on many Sundays. Here, it is a gift of God. God is giving us his peace. So where does peace begin? In the words of Job's friend, Eliphaz, he says, Acquaint now yourselves with him and be at peace. 
It begins as we get acquainted personally with the mighty Prince of Peace, the Messiah. <clears throat> it's foretold as the Prince of Peace. His peace enters the heart by the Holy Spirit and makes it independent of all outside conditions. We cannot hope for a life without sorrow. To love is to weep sometimes in the journey of life, which we all have done. One of two friends must hold the other's hand and stand by the other's coffin. That's what you do. You're helping your friend, but you're also in sorrow because you have lost a friend. But when joy isn't possible, peace is. The Lord can give us peace even though we are in sorrow. The peace of God can turn sorrow into joy. <clears throat> First, we need to stop trying to manufacture this peace feeling. We cannot keep ourselves in peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, a text says. It is the Lord who will do the keeping. The Lord is thy keeper. We need to believe that God doesn't need to get nine hours of sleep every night. To do his keeping work. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord will keep thee from all evil. He will keep thy soul. He will, because he promised. And this peace cannot be disturbed. Only if we allow doubt and fear again to dominate us, let it take over in our hearts. We must submit to him and trust him to be as good as his word. Corey Boone used to say, children, don't wrestle, nestle. And she should know. Because she endured months in the Nazi concentration camps in World War II. A lot of this has to do with our trust in God as our Father. Now there is a little story in an old book that you read about Rudyard Kipling, the author, and as he lay dying, the nurse sitting by his saw, oh boy, skipped a word, the nurse sitting by his side saw his lips moving. Thinking he needed her, she leaned over him to hear his words and realized he was praying. I'm sorry, Mr. Kipling, she said. I thought you wanted something. I do, he replied. I want my heavenly father. His heavenly father apparently came for his son. And the nurse witnessed a peace that passes understanding on the face of Rudyard Kipling as he entered the land of peace and glory. It was very evident to her that he had his final answer. Now, every one of us should have peace. If we do not have it, we're living below our privileges. We do have that privilege to have peace from God. Because this is the will of God. And it is only in the faithful doing of God's will that peace can be found. When we are focused on God and others first, we will know the peace of God. Selfishness is always a hinderer of peace. 
Are you looking for peace? Do you hear? All I want is peace. How many times have you said those words? Or at least thought them in the midst of a hectic day, being pulled in too many directions or interrupted for the umpteenth time. I think we're talking about kids, aren't we? You may have meant peace and quiet, the absence of noise or the freedom from conflict for just a moment of serene tranquility. Those are all worthy aspirations, but they all will fade away pretty quick. The peace that Jesus offers is so perfect, lasting peace. You will keep in peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. The night before he died, he promised his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. He also said to them, I have told you these things, so that in, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have trouble. Jesus didn't promise to take away our problems, but he does promise us peace in the middle of them. The Hebrew word used in the Bible for peace is shalom. The concepts behind its meaning are completeness, wholeness, a feeling of well-being and security. The related verb shalem means to restore or to reconcile. In Christ, we are reconciled to God. Our relationship with him is restored and we are made whole. So the next time you feel like you're in the middle of a whirlwind surrounded by chaos, remember that true peace, shalom, is not a feeling, but a state of being. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Like the eye of a hurricane, Jesus is our calm in the middle of life's storm. I came across a little story when I was reading through all these different uh, editions, and it just hit me as really a good way of looking at this. I'll read it off to you. There once was a king who offered a prize to the artist who would paint the best picture of peace. Many artists tried, and the king looked at all the pictures, but there were only two he really liked, and he had to choose between them. Now one picture was of a calm lake, the lake was a perfect mirror for peaceful towering mountains all around it. Overhead was a blue sky with fluffy white clouds. All who saw this picture thought it, it was a perfect picture of peace. Now the other picture had mountains too, but these were rugged and bare. Above was an angry sky from which rain fell and in which lightning played. Down the side of the mountain tumbled a foaming waterfall. That picture didn't look peaceful at all. But when the king looked closely, he saw behind the waterfall 
a tiny bush growing in a crack in the rock. In the bush, a mother bird had built her nest. There, in the midst of the rush of angry water, sat the mother bird on her nest in perfect peace. Guess which one the king selected? The second one, because to him that was a true meaning of peace. Amen. So we will have, if I can find my bulletin, I've got papers everywhere. Our final hymn is found in the Faith We Sing hymnal. On 22, 23, they'll know we are Christians. Let us all join and sing together. Thank you. 